Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Sharp English. First of all, let's talk about idioms today, but not only just general idioms, but idioms related to the human body. There's quite a few fun ones out there, and we're going to cover quite a few today, but we will probably do more uh, in future episodes. So be sure to um, hit that notification bell, subscribe, give us a big thumbs up, share this with your friends if they're looking to learn English, and of course, write any of your comments below, okay? So let's get started on idioms that relate to the human body. Now, the first one, it has kind of a morbid history to it, kind of around, I think, the 16th century, where um, they were relating to how skinny someone could get right before they die. I mean, they're starving. How thin can you get? You literally will see the bare bones right through their skin. And it kind of now means the minimal the, the minimal amount of information, kind of the bare bones. So you might say something like, you know, look, I, I, I don't want to know everything that happened today. I don't need all of the details. Just give me the bare bones and I can figure everything else out, okay? Or um, I don't want to read the rest of your report on the condition of our company. Just give me the bare bones, in other words, they just want the actual facts without very many details. The bare bones get to the point. Give me the most important information. The bare bones. Okay. Now the next one is um, it's there. It's kind of controversial, but what I understand, it relates to getting rid of unwanted guests, and this goes back to maybe the 19th century, the 1800s, uh, when people would have people over that they didn't really like. Um, when it came to serving meat, like the shoulder of mutton or uh, the shoulder of some beast that you may roast and is quite delicious, to give that shoulder to your guests cold, um, which if you've ever eaten cold lamb or mutton, I don't think it's as good, nearly as good. And it's kind of your way of telling the guest to go away. So giving them the cold shoulder of the meat or giving them the cold shoulder is kind of like to ignore someone. So you might say, you know, um, Victoria, are you angry at me? I mean, all day I've been coming up to you, trying to speak with you about things, and you just walk away. Are you giving me the cold shoulder? Did I do something wrong? So in many ways, you could think of the cold shoulder as being just a frigid, go away. Um, but basically, yeah, giving someone the cold shoulder is not being nice. It's blowing them off or getting rid of them or ignoring someone, giving them the cold shoulder. Have you done this sometime in your life or worse? Have you had this done for you or to you? It's not a good feeling, is it? Now, the next one we use a lot, um, especially in criminal activity. And it goes way back to the 1400s, uh, where um, people were caught while butchering a chicken or a cow or a pig that they had stolen. And they had blood on their hands, which is, it's um, like a smoking gun where you get caught with a murder weapon and the bullet, uh, the gun is still smoking. You get caught with a bullet in, in or the smoking gun or we could say you get caught red-handed. So getting caught red-handed basically means that um, you were caught with the evidence. Uh, and it can be something serious like stealing chickens and butchering them and being caught with blood on your hands. Or it could be something like, yeah, uh, gosh, my goodness, I was my wife, she caught me red-handed eating cookies. Well, why is that a problem? Well, because I'm on a diet and I'm not supposed to be eating cookies. So I was caught red-handed with a cookie in my mouth. Okay, so being caught red-handed is a really fun uh, idiom to use. 
uh, and English. Now here's another one, tooth and nail. And this is pretty um, self-explanatory, even though it does, it goes way back to the 1500s also. And it's kind of self-explanatory um, by reading it, tooth and nail. So what does that remind you of? It reminds you of an animal fighting with its claws or its nails, um, or a human fighting, you know, for its life with its claws or nails and teeth, you know, fighting tooth and nail. And it basically means to really want something, to really fight for it. Kind of like to do whatever it takes to get it done with. So like, you know, there's a lot of people who want this job. I want this job too. And I am going to fight tooth and nail to make sure that I get hired for this job. Tooth and nail. Here's another one. Skeletons in the closet. Now, again, this is another kind of morbid true history of the origin of that saying, skeletons in the closet. And it comes back to the time when we, when medicine was very young. And in order to discover what is the body is made of and what it's doing, we um, did autopsies or investigations or a dissection of the human body. Now, where did we get bodies? Generally, it was from criminals that have been executed. But later on, as it was transitioning to bodies who just people die, who volunteer, um, some of these times these uh, medical people would have to store the bodies or hide the bodies somewhere uh, while they were working on them. And a, uh, a closet um, or what back then it would be a cupboard or a cupboard uh, would they would keep them in um, to hide them. And so if you opened it up, that was kind of a dark secret that was in the closet. So we use that term skeleton in the closet now, or skeletons in the closet, which means secrets, something about you or your family or something that you have hidden away that you don't want people to know about. You could just, you know, and, and it could be said something like, um, uh, Bill and Mary were going to get married and have children. Uh, but the unfortunate thing is Bill never told Mary that he had been arrested many times. He has been divorced twice. He had three illegitimate children and he has stolen money from everyone he's uh, known. And once Mary found out he had all of these skeletons in the closet, she called off the wedding skeletons in the closet. And the last one is going to be heads will roll. Now, heads will roll isn't that old. It's only about 200 years old. And basically, it goes back to removing someone's head, decapitation, or you know, um, by either using a sword, an axe, or the guillotine. And then, of course, once the head is cut off, it rolls. So it's kind of a way to say um, severe punishment. Nobody's going to chop off your head uh, anytime soon, so don't worry. And if you use that expression, heads will roll, doesn't mean that you're threatening someone's life. It's just an idiom. It's just an expression. So as a teacher, I could say to my class, students, more than one of you, is cheating. I know that some of you are cheating on these tests. And if I find out who's cheating, I promise you heads will roll. Hmm. Heads will roll. That's my way of saying, oh yeah, I'm going to be very angry if I find out who's doing it and heads will roll, which basically means I'm going to tell your parents or report you to the the head the schoolmaster or the principal of the school okay guys that's it for this series of um idioms about the body and i think there's going to be more because there's so many idioms about the body but which one was interesting to you 
Which one did you like best? Or is there one that you know that I haven't mentioned? Why don't you write it down below and let me know what you think, okay? Until next class, we will see you all later on. Bye-bye now.